right okay good evening folks it's 6 43 p.m here sorry i'm like uh, a little late but not too late i suppose uh, so yes thank you very much uh, i'm live here on facebook and instagram as well so you know i hope you all can hear me here okay okay so you know it's, it's going to be a very interesting topic uh tonight uh, and i don't intend to speak uh, too long but uh Okay, let me just delve into it, all right? Uh, good evening, folks. I hope everyone's doing well. So, actually, you know, I want to talk some of my ideas, uh, which I have, you know, uh, spoken to you about even before, which is uh, the unification of Northeast states, okay? Um, to form its own sovereign nation state, okay? So I actually spoke on this uh, uh, in my previous podcast as well. But uh, neither less, you know, uh, I thought maybe i would share some of my other ideas as well on this. Um, okay. You know, so speaking of Northeast part of India, for those who are not aware of uh, Northeast states um, who are outside of India uh, or, you know, who are in India but still doesn't know, which usually happens. Um, so I'm going to go on an alphabetical order, okay? The eight states consist of Assam, Arunachal, Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Sikkim, and Tripura. Okay, so we have eight states in the northeast part of India. You know, the concept of nation state sovereignty has evolved over the past 373 years, okay, as of 2021, uh, 20, uh, which is uh, yeah, 373 years is quite a, you know, quite a long time, I, I suppose. Uh, nevertheless, uh, according to the United Nations, we have 195 countries, okay, which is recognized uh, legally. And so it's actually 193 because the two states uh, are kind of uh, non-member states, but they are, you know, uh, they, are, they have many legal, you know, uh, rights, for example, you have the Holy See, okay, and the state of Palestine, okay. Although you know, the state of Palestine could be uh, it could be a little problematic uh, if you if you actually come to think of uh, you know some of the states that object and some of the you know countries that uh, you know uh, accept it. So you know that's for your taking, and maybe you can discuss and debate about that. But uh, I'm talking about northeast part of India, so you know that's a whole different story, right? Well, it's kind of the same, uh, because uh, Northeast, uh, we, we do have a religion which is, uh, you know, Christianity. And we have Jewish people, too, in Mizoram. It's, I, I think it's in Mizoram. Um, so, you know, uh, compared to the Indian, st Indian countries, I think uh, the majority of the, you know, Christians and uh, I would say a couple of Jewish population, too. Uh, there's pockets around Mizoram, I think yeah who have uh, jewish ancestry but nevertheless uh, we're different from that okay that's one of the you know denominators uh, of, of, of uh, india versus northeast so uh, history shows us okay the concept of nation state sovereignty processes began during 1648 okay with the treaty of westphalia okay and the rise of the 28th and the 21st century, um, which was, you know, uh, I would say post World War II, which gave to the rise of, uh, you know, nationalism, and um, you know, a lot of countries that uh, came about uh, independent. Okay, uh, it doesn't have to be independent too, but they did get, you know, a lot of their uh, fervor, and you know, if, you actually, if you read the book of the Midnight. Uh, uh, yeah, Salman Rushdie's uh, book, and you know, in many other books, um, I can't, you know, exactly think on top of my head, but you know, we have a lot of authors that you know that wrote during the 20th and the 21st century regarding nationalism. Okay, I think it's Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. Okay, so uh, this territorial and legal treaties that is held adhered by the United Nations, okay, 
gives all the nation states the sovereign rights, okay, and equal participation within the international uh, system, okay. So this is uh, very important. Uh, so going back to you know my proposal or my argument or you know some of my ideas that I want to propound and maybe you know crystallize is that I wouldn't call it uh, any other word besides besides the natural rights for Northeast, the eight Northeast states of India to form and unify its own sovereign nation state. Okay, this is, this has been, you know, I've been sort of championing about this for quite a while. But, you know, I'm just, uh, <laughs> like I said, uh, repeating again. Okay, so for example, let's get into the sort of a I don't know, maybe some of the historical aspects of, you know, the, the nation state, uh, you know, narrative and, you know, how other countries have done it. So you have the American independence, okay, which actually started during the 1775 um, until 1783, okay, so they had a stretch uh, of, you know, pre-colonial, you know, monarchy system, which was imposed by the Queen, by the British, you know, Colonials, and you know they were trying to take the thirteen states, but you know, voila, you know Americans they won the battle. Okay, so but the idea of a sovereign nation state or the, or the spread of independence and nationalism uh, gave way first in Europe, and then you know, then you go across Asia and many parts of the world and Africa and, and, and many parts uh, of, you know, Middle East as well. Caparasso, in his article, Changes in the Westphalian Order, Territory, Public Authority and Sovereignty, strongly advocates that the concept of scattered islands, so we're talking about the eight states, if you, if you, uh, you know, remember that. So, you know, get back to the eight states of Northeast part of India if you ever think about islands, okay? So I'm, sp I'm speaking on a context. The scattered islands of order and authority within the boundaries of state is in direct relations to a society, okay? In other words, okay, let me quote from Caparasso, okay? He pointed out, or he strongly advocates, okay, that the territorial organization implies over a dis distinct space the subjects in that space and the economy within that space. <clears throat> it also imposes drawing together scattered islands of authority into uh, you know hierarchy. Uh, so as in a federal system, unquote. Okay. So this is in his article, which is in page number eleven. You can actually have a look at it. So what is he talking about all the scattered islands? Let me crystallize for you and, you know, give you some examples here. It includes, okay, membership of a society, political economy, okay, geography, uh, closeness, okay, or convenience, okay, because Northeast states of India were kind of clustered in the eastern part. So uh, we are only 2% of Indian's territory, if you didn't know. So we're actually very detached from India, uh, geographically, economically, politically, and many, many other things, okay? Uh, so then, of course, you have religion as well, which is a little different, very different. Uh, then you have raw materials, okay? You have citizenship, okay? You have responsibilities. You have the rights, economy, the free trade. So within the islands, okay, we have this whole, you know, uh, I wouldn't say juxtaposition uh, literally, but we do have, uh, you know, a, a melting pot within this uh, eight states, okay, which we sort of trade, uh, uh, have been trading for many, many years freely, but. Uh, you know, uh, the formation of, uh, you know, states within the eight sister states had given rise to a lot of separatists and, you know, a lot of 
you know, fights within the boundaries, I think, which is, you know, a political and a military problem, I think. And, you know, there are solutions if you actually think about and actually study about, you know. For example, okay, economy and free trade, I said, this is one of the perks that you would get uh, if you're from northeast part of India. Listen out, okay. Uh, so, for example, you have German Customs Union, which was uh, actually Prussian Customs Union, if you... You know, kind of delve into it a little bit. You can study and do your uh, research, but it's called the German Customs Union. You have the European Union as well, and you know you have many unions uh, within Europe. Which uh, and for example, even I was talking to you about like travel, the ease of travel, and you know geography, which is close. You know, in Europe, what they do is they have this Schengen visa, which uh, allows people to you know get a pass, and you can actually travel all across Europe, not having to deal with all this you know, interland permit, you know, uh, you have to go to Delhi and, you know, get some permits for investments. By the way, FDIs are actually uh, uh, notorious for the north, uh, Northeast and especially the bordering parts of India because uh, what happened during, uh, just recently, actually, if you look at the news and all that stuff, uh, the FDI uh, situation in India uh, prohibits people, outsiders, uh, foreigners, foreign companies, to invest within the bordering areas of I India. And, you know, we are bordering, so, you know, legally that, that adheres to us. So, um, I mean, um, it's a very uh, discrimin discrimin discriminatory practice, I would say, and it's very, um, uh, it, it's not convenient for, especially for the locals and the native to, ha you know, actually have to go um, I mean, I feel sorry for foreign uh, foreigners, and especially people who wants to invest in India. They have to go all the way to Delhi, you know, and book a slot in the long queue, and you know, uh, have to just wait for, you know, the center to say if it's okay to invest in Northeast. And if it does process, they will send someone from the center. Okay, so it's not that the locals or the natives of Northeast India get any say. By the way. You know, so this is actually a problem, and um, I want you all to think about this, okay? So, I already, I already told you, Northeast has always been detached from India, uh, naturally, okay? And was neglected open-handedly for so many years. Uh, therefore, we have less developments, less inclusion, uh, which has been long overdue, uh, you know, to the inhabitants of northeast part of India. I'm talking about states within the northeast states of India, okay? I'm not talking about people from other parts of, uh, you know, the bordering areas or, you know, other countries who come to northeast and, uh, you know, uh, live here and do business, which is fine, but, you know, you ought to actually see the preferences of who have been living here for, um, you know, for, for a long time, right? So, going on the same chain of narrative, let me post this here. Supposing, in, okay, in today's post-pandemic world, okay, the power of technology, the lightning speed of information, news, um, you know, via technology, opinions which are more personal, uh, which has more voice, uh, unlike those days, you know, uh, and it, it has been more open-ended as well, okay? Uh, these have all contribute, contributed to the way we have molded and shaped our brains and our minds and opinions, and, uh, you know, therefore, hey, I'm speaking here, okay? Um, yeah, so particularly in this part of the world, um, it has definitely shaped, okay? All right, so we have uh, Mutsubu here who says, Thank you for Udi for enlightening the matters of our Northeast. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your comment. And yes, I'm in a full out for Northeast. All right. So let me go ahead. Okay. Let's pose another reality here. It's a reality check uh, due to the the power of the internet. So we have this option okay for us northeast to actually sit down together or think together in the table and say okay look let's have a election an electoral poll per se okay of this movement 
okay, that I'm talking about, which is the unification of eight Northeast states to form its own sovereign nation state, okay? Or, um, you know, customs union, okay? I, I believe customs union could be a, a good starting point as well, but, uh, you know, ideas are left uh, for many to actually, uh, you know, get together and uh, put forward, okay? So, priorities can be changed uh, naturally as well. So anyways, um, if there ever was an electoral poll in this movement, okay, in-person casting of votes in and around electoral booths in each state can be done through online voting. Why I say this, okay? It's because France and USA has been doing this uh, for quite a while, I would say. You know, they've been voting their own candidates uh, online, okay? And these are legal candidates they're the ones who change policies. They're, they're the ones who actually help people, you know, uh, change the society, the culture. I mean, it, there's a lot of impact on even on online, um, you know, uh, voting system. Because it's almost the same thing. And like I said, post-pandemic, people aren't willing to come outside a lot. Um, you know, forget about touching the, you know, <laughs> the electoral vote boots and the machines and all that stuff. They don't want to do that. So. You know, uh, things that are changing, you know, and I think we all have to uh, adopt and, you know, kind of move forward. And I think it's a, it's a good chance for us Northeast folks, especially from the eight states. Uh, when France and USA have been doing it, I think they've been, France have been doing it for, uh, you know, consular officials too. Uh, they represent their own consular officials in the embassy. Uh, so anyways, that's interesting, okay. And you have India as well, who has been planning to adopt a dark card. Uh, I don't know if you know this present government wants to do it, but you know I, I definitely foresee that India will be st starting to vote, okay, on on um, you know uh, online voting per se uh, in the years to come. But uh, anyways, so all right, well. That is my opinion, and you know I encourage you to you know actually uh, share the word out, and you know uh, pro especially among Northeast people and people outside too, international and uh, national as well. Hey, you know uh, I'm sure you know people will agree on me and maybe not, but hey, I'm just putting my ideas on the table, and you know if you think it's legit, if you think it's accountable, credible, and legal as well, you know. Uh, I feel like it's legal, uh, according to international laws. But nevertheless, uh, you know, for the sake of democracy, um, I feel like if we do have a electoral voting system where each Northeast folks uh, within each state or I don't know each uh, colony or they can set up boots like that and get that opinion out, I think that'll be a very great initiative. Um, so anyways, I hope you like my podcast. I'm going to make it a little short today, but uh, I'll see you guys in my next podcast. All right. Okay. Take care.